Today, we're going to explore the profound truth of the gospel that no one else has covered since Shia LaBeouf said this about suffering. Check it out. How do you make your suffering useful? How can you make your pain useful? That's be the question that I would ask anybody because I think the answer to that question is really the answer that everyone's chasing. Because if suffering has no meaning, if suffering has no purpose, then this life sucks. It's just... But before we get into it, my name is Tim Joseph and I'm the host of the Vivid Ascension Podcast, where our mission is to encourage believers as we move from one degree of glory to another. If it's your first time here, I want to invite you to subscribe to be part of the community. And if you are returning, welcome back. Really appreciate you being here. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. We're about at 1.04, so definitely subscribe join if you have not yet so going into our topic for today with suffering i saw this video that had been released about a year ago with shia labeouf he was on set for a film called padre pio and he had completed filming and was interviewed if you're at all familiar with shia labeouf he has had a bit of a controversial background to him but he recently gave his life to christ and he's converted to catholicism and i watched this interview and there are many other interviews circulating throughout youtube and the internet of him just really being open about his faith and sharing specifically what drew him to becoming a christian and believing in christ and when he said this about suffering it was so profound so let's kind of let's kind of watch a snippet and I'll put down in, in the description section um, the original video but let's take a look at what he says here is this machine will never suffer what makes me human is my suffering and when I look at Christ on the cross I think mm, is that a joyful man as he bleeds out and dies on a cross for humanity is that man joyful and I think the answer is yes that even in his suffering, that's what Christ represents for me. Meaningful suffering. You, you know, the story of Christ is that God became man for our betterment. So that means that he is in a, the ultimate example, the supreme priest, the ultimate redeemer. If I look at Christ on the cross, I think that's very instructive. You don't see a lot of smiley face Christs on the cross. Mm -hmm. You don't see cross on the cross, cross dying and laughing with a plum. Mm -hmm in joy in ultimate joy but i think you should they should make some christs on the cross in ultimate serenity in ultimate joy they always make christ like this sad face and that seems stupid it seems like it seems like it's not deep enough like the artists who manufacture those crucifixes they're it's almost like they they're not seeing the full story and the full story i believe is that christ is in maximum joy in that yeah. moment he is fully in his purpose and that's if you can tap into how you can use your suffering to help other people that is maximum maximum joy i always thought joy was oh i get this and then i'm happy or i do this and then i'm happy or i get her and then i'm happy or i make that and then i'm happy or they respect me and then i'm happy or i always thought happiness was to be acquired by the things i would gain from life that's why i was always grabbing if I knew early on that happiness actually is in me offering all of my suffering up for other people as some as an instructive thing or as something that could benefit man, then I maybe would have lived my life differently. Um, so I guess the question I would ask anybody uh, is how do you, how do you use your suffering to tap into uh, your joy? How do you how do you how do you how do you remix suffering into joy i would ask anybody that and because and not everybody has an answer to that and those people who don't have an answer are are not going to be happy people because suffering is guaranteed and unless you can take suffering and make it joy or find suffering in your joy not as a masochist not as some snm whipping yourself type of nonsense it's rearrange yeah, how do you, how does your perspective change on suffering? How do you look at suffering like, oh, this, this isn't suffering uh, in the, in the, 
in the notional sense. This is actually my route to joy. That in in and through the suffering is how I actually get to maximum joy. And the answer to that is found in the Bible. Now, I have referenced this passage many different times. I may, I may have even referenced it the last episode that I posted or dropped. But in James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy when you go through trials of various kinds, for the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So let steadfastness have its full effect, making you mature and complete, lacking in nothing. So there, immediately, we are seeing that we are told and being called to find joy in the midst of the trials that we experience or the suffering that we experience because of the fact that in the midst of our suffering, we are being matured. We are being built up and we are in many ways being sanctified and being positioned to be more like Christ. And that is the goal. That is the goal in this life of dying to ourselves and being made alive in Christ. But that process of dying to ourselves requires suffering. And if you are suffering and not understanding the purpose behind it, and you're not able to find joy in your suffering, it's going to be a really, really challenging life to live. There are two instances in 1 Peter. We're going to start with 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. And we're going to read all the way to verse 19. And it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory be revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. So we'll pause there. What is that telling us? It's telling us when you sin and you bear the consequences of your sin, that's not the suffering in which you should find joy. But when you take on the mantle, when you take ownership of your faith and live out the life that God has called you to live as a follower of Christ, accepting him not only as your savior, but your Lord and being obedient to his will over your life. Inevitably, there will be suffering. And in the midst of that suffering, you can rejoice. You can find joy in knowing one, that you are pleasing the Father in dying to yourself, in denying yourself because you want to live a life that is honoring to God. And two, you can find joy in knowing that when it may feel as if nobody else in the world understands what you're going through, Christ is sharing those sufferings with you. And what a blessing and a privilege it is to share in those sufferings with Christ, to experience that level and depth of intimacy with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior and Creator of heavens and earth. The one who sits at the right hand of the Father, the King of Kings, he understands your suffering and he is with you in the midst of your suffering. What other reason could there be? What other better reason could there be to rejoice, to find joy? First Peter chapter five, 
verse 10, it says, And the God of all grace, who calls you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So for those of you who are going through your suffering, and you're in the midst of your suffering, and you're saying, I can't do it any longer. I can't. This is too much. I can't continue to walk through this suffering. I can't continue to struggle with the things that I'm struggling with. How can I have joy in this? Scripture is telling you to be steadfast. Again, I'm going to read that one more time. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. First Peter chapter 3, it says, But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. Romans chapter 5, there's a lot of scripture, but it's so good. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through, 5, 3 through 5, it says, Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. There's purpose in your suffering. There are so many reasons for you to rejoice in your suffering. You know that through your suffering, you're being built up, you're being matured, you're, giving, you're, you're, you're being strengthened, you're being given endurance, but also in your suffering, you know that Christ is with you and he is sharing it with you. It's a blessing. It's, I believe suffering is in fact a gift that we only receive in this physical realm, on this side of heaven. Because in heaven, in paradise, in eternity, every tear will be wiped away. There will be no more mourning. There won't be any suffering. When you think about the closest friendships and bonds that you have in life, they are probably with friends, family members that you have gone through the ringer with. When you're going through a challenging time, when you're going through a deep level of suffering, the ones that were with you I'm sure those are the ones that you are closest to because there's something special and intimate about walking with someone through their suffering. Someone that is bearing, excuse me, bearing those burdens with you. And so my friend, as you are listening to this, as you're watching this, I wanna tell you, find joy in knowing that you're not alone in your suffering. Find joy in knowing that Christ is with you in the midst of your suffering. Where this world we live in wants us to enjoy being comfortable. And when we experience suffering, the immediate response is to deny it, refuse it. But we know naturally in the midst of suffering, growth takes place. When I exercise, my wife and I were training for 5K right now, and I have to put my body through a level of suffering and my lungs and heart through a level of suffering each time I go to the gym, each time I'm outside and exercising because it's preparing me and maturing my body and strengthening my body so I can be prepared for this race that's coming up. And in many ways, this physical example applies to things spiritual. 
with regards to suffering and the necessity of it at times. You know, um, we talked about Joseph. Another another example, and we, we talked about the suffering that Joseph experienced, right? But another example is the suffering, of course, that Job experienced. And throughout, all throughout the book of Job, the question is, why, why am I going through this? And he's, he's crying out to God. He's like, God, why is this happening? What did I do to deserve this? But the fact of the matter is, most of the time, the answer is that this is just life. There's no reason why. It is just life. Suffering takes place. And specifically, as a follower of Christ, in this world that we live in, we know that there will be a level of persecution that we will face. But stand firm, resist the devil, and he will flee you. And be encouraged knowing that your brothers and sisters around the world are going through the same challenges, are facing the same challenges or suffering as you. So, this channel, this podcast is meant to encourage you, and I hope that this truth <laughs> shared by Shia LaBeouf encourages you and reminds you to keep pressing forward. We might go a little bit deeper on suffering because there are different levels to suffering, whether it be relationally or personally suffering in terms of our ongoing struggles with sin but that would be for another time thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening the lord bless you and keep you and um, as as always i'll see you in the next one oh also, don't forget, please subscribe, share this video. Uh, we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So please, if you, if you, if you want to join the community, uh, we welcome you. Uh, Vivid Ascension community welcomes you with open arms. But thank you, my brother, my sister. God bless you. Be easy. Peace.